out as a player, uh, having played in Kansas City, played in games like this, how much do you maybe draw on that, or is it your coaching experience at this point that matters as you go to this leg? I mean, I think there's always experiences that you try to draw from, and as a player, I mean, that's what I have. I spent 14 years in the National Football League, and I, I don't even know how many playoff games. Um, but that, those were, were good experiences about preparation and, and really focusing on what, what got us to this point um, from, from where we were at different points in the season. And then there's also things that I have to, to do as, as, a, as a coach uh, to make sure that we're ready. You see Derrick Henry having so much success against eight in the box. What is it that makes your unit able to find that success in that situation? Well, I think the guys try to uh, finish. I think they're playing with a lot of confidence. I think our receivers are willing to go in there uh, and get that extra player. Um, you know, there, there's different ways to run the football, you know, against post safety defense. Um, you know, and so we'll continue to try to do that. We'll continue to try to, to stay balanced, to try to throw the football. But uh, I think everybody's buying in that it takes all 11 to run the football, um, whether that's the quarterback you know, executing the call at the line of scrimmage to give us the angles, to get us in the right play, to give us the angles that we need, um, you know, the line working in, in unison to, to get to the second level, and then certainly the, um, the receivers, Corey, Tajay, AJ, um, to go in there and, and, and dig out the guy that we got to get dug out. Since Ryan's been the starter, the red zone offense has only come up without a touchdown something like four times. <coughs> how's that been possible? At the, and how's the variety of what you do down there been sustainable? I think the players have a lot of confidence down there. I think we've been able to get the ball to a lot of different players, which makes it um, exciting for them to, to be a part of the, the plan. Uh, we've been able to run it in. Uh, we've been able to, to throw it. Um, some, some plays that we've been you know, running since April 15th when we were here for OTAs um, that the players are comfortable with, that they've run against a lot of different coverages. You know, and then there's um, you know, been some scheme plays that we've added you know, each and every week. And, and, and I, I know Arthur and, and, and his staff and I enjoy that process of, of coming in and looking at the red zone every week because you know, the players have done such a good job of, of focusing on it and uh, it's helped us. I mean, they've given up 14 points a game uh, defensively. You know, Spags has them, has them playing very well. And they've been able to turn the football over, create short fields uh, for their offense, which is explosive. Uh, they're playing with the lead, uh, you know, which then you know they can blitz, they can pressure, they can make life miserable for the quarterback when you're trying to come back. Um, you know, in those games. How much of a difference does Chris Jones make when he's in the lineup? Well, he's a, he's a fantastic player. He's a big athlete. Um, he's not just a grinder, a, a guy that just goes in and and is going to try to go down the middle of you. He'll he'll make you miss. He'll swim. Uh, I, and I also think he's very instinctive. You know, when you watch him play in the run game and have an idea of where the ball is going, uh, he's not just a guy that runs up the field, which I can appreciate. You know, just trying to get sacks all the time. I think he's an instinctive football player for for a defensive lineman, and, and I know that I've talked about Jarrell in that regard. Um, you just don't normally get those defensive linemen that have an idea of maybe what a run scheme is or you know, how this, the blocking scheme is going to work. What's about Ryan's skill set that makes him a fit for what you guys want to do offensively? I think he's athletic. I think he's accurate. I think he's prepared. Um, I, think he's a, I think he's a really good leader. I think that uh, you know, the guys, uh, he, he's been able to hold players accountable um, in his own way. I think that's the whole process of what we've been trying to do. You know, I certainly have a style. You know, my job is to hold everybody accountable. Um, Arthur, Dean, and and Craig have a have a style, but but our players have to have styles to to be able to hold each other accountable. Uh, you know, and not get our feelings hurt. What is the balance there on, on holding people accountable, but then having good relationships? You know, being a players coach, how do, how do you find that balance? Oh, I just try to be honest. You know, I'm not. Again, I'm. I'm not trying to be friends with them, but if I have a really, I have to have a relationship with 63 players on this team, um, and coaches, and sometimes those relationships are better than than others. That's the reality of it. Uh, I try to be honest. I try to not waste a whole lot of time. We don't have a whole lot of time to, you know, him haul around. I try to be honest, direct, clear, concise. Um, 
and I think that there's a lot of trust that goes into um, before you can hold somebody accountable, that they have to trust that I know what I'm talking about, that I, I'm putting the team first in every decision I make. And, uh, and I think that the players have to, to trust each other so that they can hold each other accountable and say, you know, because then if, if you don't trust the guy and somebody says, you know, you need to pick it up, uh, you know, then, then guys start, you know, there's pushback. Some of the guys said that you refer to this team as street rats. What does that term mean and how did we get started? Um, you know, just the guys, the type of guys that we have, you know, that, that play hard. Um, you know, being a relatively young coach, you know, finished playing, got went coaching, and, and Jim Haycock was at Ohio State, and you know, Jim has been a, a great mentor among other people. But but my first office was next to Jim Haycock, and he was the defensive coordinator. I coached linebackers. Luke was the head coach, and Jim was the first one in. I mean, it was you know, four in the morning. He we would talk, and I would ask him things, and um, he would say, "The greatest compliment you'll ever get as a coach is that your players play hard." When somebody that you respect in this profession says, "You know, your guys play hard." And, uh, and he was right uh, when somebody, you know, finally told me that. But I, those are the type of players that we want, that, that we need, because when things get tough, um, which they always do, you know, those guys find a way, they compete. If you get beat, you don't pout, you don't sulk, you, know, you make a mistake on offense, you fumble, you throw an interception, like, we, we have to come back. How do you see it? Do you, do you differentiate well, them? I, I think when you talk about the Chiefs, I think you talk about a coach that has done it for a long time and has seen and been able to adapt and to adjust to his roster. Um, and whether you run, you know, I, I think this is cyclical. I, I think that if old school is hustling and being physical and playing hard, um, then that's, to me, football. And, and the schemes are always going to be um, great. Everybody's got a great scheme. But it's the, it's the players and the teammates that make the, the scheme really work. When you sat down to put together your game plan for this week, did any particular message pop into your mind that you wanted to deliver to your guys? I think the biggest thing is that you know, we can't change what we've done uh, to get us in this um, position uh, to have this opportunity. And uh, you know, on October 14th, we were 2-4. and four. I was a bad coach, and this was a bad team. And uh, you know, we, we tried to believe in each other. We tried to improve, tried to prepare, um, trust each other, execute. And um, you know, that's what's gotten us here. So we're not, we, we can't change and start to make things up now. Was there a particular game or stretch where you felt like the offensive line finally started to gel? And, or has it just been a gradual process? I think it's been a gradual process. I think what happens is the runner starts running and breaking tackles and making yards and then the line starts getting excited and then and the line blocks better and then, then maybe the runner doesn't have to run as well as he did before but you know it's you know when you start rolling then guys want to block better and finish longer than the guy with the ball and you start to build confidence week to week and then you build momentum through the week of practice and then into the game. Game. How tough is it to keep players locked in? We, we, I think we're excited. I think that when I stand up here, we're excited to still be playing and, and practicing and locked in for a new challenge. You know, every, every game you win, the next one gets bigger. You go from 32 to 12, from 12 to 8, 8 to 4. I think my math's okay, but you know that's just where you're at. And, and we didn't know it any different. We really went to Houston and. Uh, you know, we, we put everybody's suit in a, in a bag and we dry clean them for the night. If we win, we dry clean them and we, we, we give everybody their suit back for the next week and we fly. Uh, we did that in Baltimore and we'll do that again this week. When, when you first started talking about Dory coming back, you talked about potential third down roll. Then it took him a couple more weeks. But he came back and plugged in, it seemed like, right where he was before. Is that uncommon for an injured guy to come back and, and – it right it, it's um, it's very um, difficult, and I'm always conscious of this, having, I guess, gone through injuries, which we know are a part of this game, is to try to stay engaged uh, mentally uh, in what your job is. When you can't do something, and as, as a DB, you, know, you have to be able to run, and if you can't run, you know, it's hard to practice those physical skills. 
And so we ask guys to stay engaged, locked in with the details, still work the game plan uh, to be ready to go when they're healthy. How good has he been since he's come back? Well, I mean, it's, it's been good. It's been great to see him out there, give us a little bit of speed. And, uh, you know, made a couple plays last week. And so, you know, again, we're, we're going to need everybody's better efforts than we had last week. You guys have gotten off to really nice starts in these games on the road. How important is that? good start against a team like Kansas City? And if you somehow don't get it, how important is keeping your composure the other way? I mean, we've been down. We've played them pretty much both ways. Um, you know, when you go on a road, you understand it's going to be loud. It's going to be a um, hostile environment. The details um, of the game plan and making sure that the players uh, know exactly what we're doing early on, whether that be defensively, offensively, or special teams situation. You know, because they're going to be excited, they're going to be you know, amped up. The crowd's going to be into it. Um, we found that out last week. Unfortunately, on third down, we you know we got to clean up the operation. You know, getting the play in there quicker and, and making sure that you know Ryan doesn't have a million things to look at. We can we can give ourselves a chance. So, you know, we always want to play from ahead. I mean, who doesn't? But then, you know, we were down against these guys uh, in here at, at our place, and um, you know, found a way to battle back. So. Again, we're not going to quit because we're ahead uh, at the end of the first quarter or we're behind. As evident, as explosive as they are, I don't think that that's a hard message to, to, to tell our team. They all watch the game of, of Sunday's game. When you see the Chiefs do a lot of that bunch with zero splits, why does that, and, and rub routes out of that, why does that make it so? You could, are you an offensive guy? You already know, Coach. You know. <laughs> But no, why does it make it so? Why is that so hard to defend? Well, it's, I mean, you can play man or you can play zone. And if it's third and three and you play zone, there's a lot of space. And so when teams choose to play man, you know, you have to have answers, um, you know, for bodies moving in different positions. They start, one becomes three, three becomes one, you know, two's running a shallow cross, two's running a shallow cross, and then pivots back out. Um, you know, I think they have great skill set for, for a lot of those routes. You know, Kelsey, um, you know, they're able to, to set routes up and stem them at guys and then, you know, come underneath. Um, you know, so it's a great challenge. It's, it's, a, it's a very good scheme. They're well coached. I mean, um, they're number one in the league on third down for a reason. What makes Kelsey so difficult as he, a He's athletic. I think he's instinctive. Um, and I talked about it the other day. His routes don't look like anybody else's route. I mean, it's, it's, the, the route is get open. And at whatever depth the quarterback wants, um, you know, he, he can freeze guys and then burst across the field. He's got great uh, catch radius, you know, where he's got, I mean, he's long. He's tall, he's long, he, he's athletic, you know, and he's, he's tough and, and it's, it's a tough challenge. It's, it's hard, you know, and he creates, you know, he runs double moves, he runs routes like a receiver. Plays well at the top of the route. Plays plays with good play strength. Playing against a guy like Jackson Lamar last week help you in any way as you face Mahomes? Uh, I think that's just two different different weeks and two different skill sets. I mean, you know, Lamar has a certain skill set that is impressive. Um, you know, but Patrick can you know he he's not obviously as fast, but I mean, his ability to drift away from pass rush and you pressure him and we pressured him here and you know, you, you think a guy's free and he just drifts five yards and then throws a 15 yards in front of Hill, and he runs underneath it. And so I guess that it's just it's pro football. You're playing the, the best players at, at their position, uh, whether that's you know, Deshaun or Patrick or Lamar last week. I know you only want to worry about your own team, but knowing how Kansas City was able to dig themselves out of that hole last week against Houston and even in the locker room after the game, it was obvious that it brought them together mm -hmm. in a way that I think they're coming to this game with, with, with even more confidence than the, that they have. Do you have concern that they're going to have a little bit different, a different edge to them now after getting that win? Mm, you know, I think that that's a confident football team. I mean, they had won seven in a row. Um, they're fully aware of their explosiveness and what they can do. Uh, you know, I, I'd like to think that, that we're playing with a lot of confidence too. You know, I think that when you can run the football against the, the Baltimore Ravens, uh, the New England Patriots, uh, take care of the football. You know, th those are, and I want our players to play with confidence too. You know, there's, um, 
there's a lot of ways that these games unfold. I've learned from great coaches that you have to have a game plan, but you also can't predict uh, the way that the game's going to unfold. And however it unfolds, you have to start coaching that way um, and then make adjustments. How much of that confidence, you kind of mentioned it earlier, the environments you go into, but you guys have won a lot on the road straight. How much of the confidence is built just off of going away, playing away, and getting those wins and those cups? Well, you have to be able to do things before you can have confidence in them. You can't just talk about it. You have to go and do it and experience it and understand that, you know, hey, we execute these keys and, and we win and we execute the game plan and, and players make plays. And so you have to have those experiences that you've done it to be able to, to, to draw upon it. Um, and then the more you do it, the more confident that you get. And if there's bumps along the way, you know, you can, you can say, hey, listen, we've already done this, which is I'm sure that the mentality that, that the Chiefs took last week. I think they're well coached. I think Terrell does a great job. I think they've taken a lot of pride in it. I, I think going back to, to the Colts and, and really when we went on the road there, what was um, I, I saw that unit um, get challenged and they responded uh, against a, a very good physical offensive line. And I think that that's kind of given them the confidence to continue to play great run defense with great technique, great effort. Uh, building a wall, you know, setting edge, and, and trying to swarm. So I, I can just remember going back to, to that game and, and, and challenging those guys. And, and you know, I think it's it's been a group effort. Everybody's contributed. Um, Daquan and, and, and Austin Johnson. And so. You guys have obviously leaned on Derrick Henry a lot, but I think with you know, your deep passing game, it seems to be kept defense a lot honest. Like last week, you saw that in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. How was that? Well, I mean, we have to take shots in this league. I mean, it's hard to, to drive it 12 or 13 plays um, every time. You know, it's just well called, well executed play that, you know, that, that, was, the, that was quarterback and, and receiver making a play. Sometimes you catch them and, and you run with them, and, and sometimes you got to take them downfield. Thanks, guys.